much that it's, uh, it's a pleasure to be here, and especially to be here in person. And, uh, I was one of the very lucky ones to have a field of not cats because of pandemics, because I could precisely dig into the time window that Svalbard was open uh, in, in those summers. And, and here's a little uh, story about uh, what we've done on exploring uh, workflows inside of spheres in Svalbard. Yes. Can you put your camera on? Because then people can see you online as well. Sorry, we have the pleasure of seeing you, but the people online can see you then as well, if that's okay. The camera. Thank you very much. Thank you for reminding me. Stage fright. Right, where was that? Uh, right, yeah. So, um, uh, the interesting thing regarding the uh, uh, melting of glaciers is that uh, water melting takes strange radiant measures, and the way the water travels actually will determine how these glaciers move in the end. When you want to model the flow of the glaciers, then all the possible basic in the equations have to uh, fall on surfaces. There are a few things we know very little about. And this is how the water is flowing inside of the pressures. When they're melting in summers, and you can see the melt water making channels in the pressures, and sometimes, and at some point, the channels disappear somewhere inside of the pressures. And then we observe the coming out from the other end from the outlet of the pressures. But we have very little understanding of the section that's happening in between the inlet and the outlet. And all the technology we have so far to understand these physically uh, at point measurement, which is uh, very imprecise and very expensive. If we have, for example, the um, brown penetrating radar, so we can also take the big old mower to the glacier and go back and forth, back and forth, probably understand where the channels are. Or um, you will make four holes, which is also a very uh, devastating experience, but you still probably have a point measurement. What's what it was doing. So our, our uh, uh, answer to this challenge is to make uh, uh, smart tractors that are traveling with the water. Uh, we put some in inside the glacier and then we take them out from the other side. Uh, what we can report then is that uh, the pressure, the acceleration, and the magnetic meter data. So what you don't have inside the glacier is a global reference, a GPS measurement. So we actually don't know where we are when you come. And this is where the challenges come from. Uh, here is this little video also showing once you're on the surface of the glacier, then uh, you could record the signals of uh, those devices flowing inside the channel. And on the chart above, you can see how the pressure data is accumulating. But the same happens with acceleration and the determinant data. And um, of course, you can relate it to the global reference. But my idea of going to this collection was that since I've been working in robotics for a long time, and navigation and localization is one of the basic problems in mobile robotics. And we have pretty good ideas what to do with have a global reference, but we still want to build the map. And my hypothesis was that if I'm smart enough, that thing would be doable also inside the spatial. So what we did was um, granting access to uh, interact new models of station, climbing up first to Western Berkeley and Fletcher uh, for several years, and throwing them stuff inside the spatial. Uh, so and first, you can observe how they are seeing the pictures of floating on the surface of the glacier, and you can also relate it to the GPS coordinate. So, you actually can prove more precise recordings for me in a global reference way. But at some point, they disappear inside the glacier, and then comes the most difficult part, which is actually uh, uh, harvesting the mountains and the mountains of terrestrial outlets. And this is now uh, not exactly an exact science, but uh, here are me and my partner standing on the glacier outlet and looking something uh, 
computer system piece, and this is where we already have a tight different approach. Two people uh, standing in different pot, one giving the ability to work against the other one picking up the crypto. <laughs> uh, our recovery rate was about fifty uh, percent, which was a very very good one actually. Because we had crypto and we didn't lose anything. Um, last summer we were on a home uh, um, sailing pleasure. Uh, you know, this, uh, this is a marine community pleasure. Yeah. So I realized that this is much more difficult because the pleasure problem is extremely difficult. And we actually don't know at what point the surface and where is the surface at all. And our uh, approach. Uh, our answer is that to have a, a more uh, high tech uh, solution having uh, radio tag triggers, which would be sent on a sensor level. So, the last of my side basically was hanging at the pleasure from for hours and hours, increasing with the radio antenna and something that can uh, change. So, yeah, that was our uh, art adventure, and then we went home. But Actually, this is where really work started. So we had a lot, lot of data from different um, uh, triggers, which we had to process, filter, resample, uh, uh, model, and eventually, what was the outcome was that was a map of uh, the glacier network pass inside the glacier. So the um, topology of uh, of the channel being visible there, and the so model showing the velocities of different points. Um, as such, we understand now what exactly is happening to the left border uh, in pressurized channel, non pressurized channel, what kind of velocities there are, what kind of topologies there are, and the hoping that this is a last missing puzzle piece. We can put into models of pleasure dynamics to have greater prediction of pleasure dynamics, pleasure melt, and scene of price. Again, thank you very much, Hamel and Terry and everybody, for uh, managing the interact so well, giving us such an interesting experience for several years of field work and look forward to more. Thank you. Uh, it's wonderful to have a tour inside a glacier. I've never been there before. Uh, and I'm going to allow myself one question before I open up the floor. And that is, um, have you looked at the effects of the movement of water inside the glacier, that erosion and the expansion of the, 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 the channels within the glacier? Because it seems that at the moment our paradigm is that glaciers um, are, are being lost through just changes in uh, the balance between the mass loss of glaciers between precipitation and uh, evaporation and loss on the surface. But you can understand that if there are lots of channels inside the glaciers that have been eroded by movement of water all the time, then there could be some really big problems ahead for collapse of glaciers that we're not looking at now. That's a very good uh, question for example. Well, first few experiments with interact, without interact, people have been measured and the uh, glacial level force uh, or pass for years and years. And those channels actually known that are also investigating human input. And actually, some of the uh, data goes back for 20 years or more. And if you look at that, you can really say, see how the channels are actually changing inside the sun. So um, I think the time series of but secretive years have a really, really big meaning to understand how this method works or channels are evolving. And sometimes you need just just a, a season, it's a metaphor season for one month. If you post that every day and look at how the metaphor channels are evolving during the value so that it already gives a very interesting insight what is going to happen and those are possible predictions to the Thank you very much. Are there questions from the audience? Piotr. Yes, very well. You're using new technology.
Any more questions in the audience here? Any questions on by the online audience? You can either raise your hand and make a question or you can submit your oh you you raise your hand, please go ahead. Yeah, I was just wondering, um, are there any other transnational access? stations that you could use to do similar work or is this limited just to where you've been on this one so do you think you could expand this as a future interact project again of course i'm very happy to expand it to uh, in scale mostly because uh, would be kind of you know having a proof of concept on a small glacier it's actually just a river it's a joint glacier probably everybody agrees on that but our ambition is to go really, really large and we're developing our technology to have it more uh, uh, reliable. So I, I'm very much for it. Thank you. Any other questions? No, I see one. There was one question. I was going to ask a question, what next? But I think I know it's going to be somewhere in or <laughs> somewhere next. Next time I'm going to Yes, yes. <laughs> On the copy, right? <laughs> and of course, what is excellent is this meeting is largely to stimulate collaboration and synthesis. So already we succeeded. Excellent. Yes. <laughs>